Today we're going to do something a little bit different with the video on the Kissel. We're actually going to show you exactly how to do something. Here I'm removing the window trim from the brome, and if you look, I'm showing you that everything's numbered on the back. Kissel was so serious, even though they were a low volume producer, all the parts have numbers. Here I am sanding one of the window trims using a mouse sander and 60 grit sandpaper. The objective here is to remove all of the old finish and clean up any large scratches, etc. Get everything real nice. Now, the thing I don't worry about is removing everything on the back. That's not necessary. Again, also because I really don't want to obliterate those original Kissel numbers. So, mostly concentrated with the front and that rounded edge. The lower piece, it's also the back edge shows. They're cleaned up the same way. So everything's gone over this way until I'm happy with the basic condition of the part. Then we're going to dust everything off and we're going to switch to Varathane sanding sealer and a high quality brush and we're actually going to paint the entire piece, every single bit of the entire piece. Even any paint on the backside we didn't remove. The objective here is obviously to seal up the wood but it's also to give us a real nice surface to paint on. And the reality is, is I go through one round of this and we'll show you how we sand it and tell you that in a minute. And we actually do a second round, same process. So here it is out in the sun at 84 degrees, having had the sanding sealer on it. And now I'm back with the mouse and we're using 240 grit sandpaper with the mouse and going back over it. Once we complete this, I actually repeat the sanding sealer and the 240 a second time. We didn't show you that, but it's be a little boring to see it twice. Here you can see a dirty can of thinner, and you can see I pulled out a, oh gee, nice stainless steel ladle. I store my stainless steel ladle in a dirty can of thinner, but it's a great way to keep it. So it's always clean and ready, and a place you can dump it when you're done using it. Stainless steel ladle, if you buy it in the grocery store, will probably outlast you. And it's the neatest way to measure. You don't need any measuring cups that are all graduated already. Instead, you use your ladle and just count ladles. If you need a 50-50 mixture, it's one ladle of each item. If you had a 4, 2, and 1, which happens to be the mixture used for spraying the urethane when it's sprayed on the outside of the car, it's just as easy to count for a color, two reducer, and one of the hardener. Very simple to do it this way. So that's how I do it. Here I'm using a lacquer primer surfacer that I got at O'Reilly. I'm surprised that you get lacquer primer surfacer anymore. And straight old lacquer thinner. The mixing ratio should be 50-50, but I find with my HVLP gun that I do a little better with probably 50-50 plus adding at least another actual ladle of lacquer thinner. Give me a slightly thinner mixture than you would think you'd want. And that's probably because I don't like to change out the tip on the gun and it works real well just to use a little bit more thinner in this mixture. Now we're going to get ready and mix it up real well. And then we're going to strain it into the gun. I always strain it into the gun because you never know that you're not going to get some sort of foreign body or something not quite perfect in your paint mixture that you don't want to get strained out. Oh, like, oh, gee, I didn't mix it quite well enough, maybe. Hmm, I think I'll strain it. Now you'll notice the outside of the gun isn't particularly clean. I don't worry about the outside, it's the inside I keep clean all the time. I always clean it after every use. And I actually store the gun with lacquer thinner in it so that it is always ready to use. Empty the lacquer thinner just before I use it into a can. Use it for cleaning up afterwards. So once this is strained, we'll go out and spray with the gun. The way I normally spray is I am running a 60 pound line pressure three to four actual pressure coming out of the gun. You saw me actually wipe everything down with a tack rag, set everything up on my nice little bucket here, and we'll spray back and forth. You'll notice probably about four sprays per direction. So I'm putting it on fairly heavy because remember I'm going to sand some of this off. This is about getting a fairly decent spread on it, but also quite thick so I have something to sand off and take out imperfections which is exactly what primer surfacer is for. Here it is drying, it was about 84 degrees when I was shooting these. So it dries pretty fast, under 10 minutes, the stuff's ready to sand. Here you'll see I've got Bondo glazing putty, nice little red putty. 
This is perfect for the purpose at hand. It's really a super thick thinner, but there are some little flaws mostly around the actual holes where we mount the pieces, just from damage them being taken on and off through the years. And this will fill the minor imperfections that exist there. This is also basically a lacquer based product dries very quickly. Here you'll see I'm wet sanding. Yes, I'm really wet sanding with 320 grit sandpaper. There's a little bit of Dawn dish soap always in my water. If you don't put Dawn dish soap in there, some other dish soap necessary, but Dawn works really well. Also tends to remove any possible oils that you get off from your hands. And so I sand the whole thing out and you say, oh my God, you're gonna get water in the wood. No, you won't. First of all, it's Arizona, it's pretty darn dry, but second of all, we already sealed all that wood twice with sanding sealer. So virtually none of the water gets in the wood and works out really well. And you'll notice I'm actually not using that much water. Using two different sanding uh, backers here. One is actually, of course, the pad that is hard. That's used mostly for the flat surfaces. The foam pad was used mostly for the rounded surface on the front. So I use both of them switch off there. Wiped it off with an old rag. And so this is the result of what you get after you've done your initial sanding. Now, the other thing you have to do is go back and use a countersink and I clean out the mounting holes where the screws go. And that's any excess filler I got in there, uh, dust, dirt, excess sanding material that's hardened in there, just removing that, not taking out any wood. Here we are for a second time around. Each one of them required at least two times of primer surfacer, but if they were good enough on the second shot of primer surfacer, there's no sanding in between, we go directly to the color. If they're not good enough, we did three or four times. Sometimes some additional red fillers used wherever we have minor flaws. It looks like a lot, but almost all of that sands off. Here we are back again at our handy dandy storage point for our stainless steel ladle, cleaning it off, getting it ready. And we're gonna do the color here. The color is the exact same paint on the outside of this car. They used Brewster Green paint on the outside. They used it for the trim on the inside. There was a huge difference though. The outside is a glossy finish. The inside of the car was all done in satin. Sort of makes sense because glossy paint against the mohair, I think would look a little garish and not quite correct. So every surface inside that's painted in the car is a satin style finish or low gloss finish. This particular mixture setup is supposedly supposed to come out satin. It's two of the color, that's a urethane, Supreme Plus urethane by Limco, and it's one of LF10, which is supposed to be a flattening agent, and it is, which gives you about net 40% when you figure it out that we also have hardener in here, and that's LHF. This is the fast hardener, and we're going to use half a ladle of that. So we've got five parts that are supposedly just our color and hardener, and the other part, which is in effect a 40% flattening agent, and boy, it didn't seem to make much difference to me. Didn't seem to come out the way we wanted it to look. So the end result is, is we still mixed every batch this way. We still painted everything the same way, but it seemed to come out a bit too glossy. However, we have a solution for that that we came up with at the end here. And while we don't show it to you, I'll tell you how we did it. It's very simple. Right here, we're getting ready to put it in the gun. You know, so I'm going to strain it again. Gun obviously was cleaned in between the primer surfacer and the color coat we're going to mix in and put in the gun. And what you're going to find is that when we go to do color, that takes more shots. Primer surfacer, you can do in one round. Color tends to take three rounds for us to get the color up to what we want. The initial round, as you can see, I put the parts on top of saw horses on top of angle irons. I'm actually working on the underside. And really what I'm interested in here is that rounded edge. Obviously additional paint gets on the rest of it, but we've already sealed it up. It isn't going to be seen. That isn't really what we're after here. We're really working on the edge. It's just incidental that we paint the underside the rest of the way. I'm never too worried about whether the color is uniform on the rest of it, just that edge. And it'll take three times through here, even though it isn't shown, it takes three times. Now that Nashville our cat has gone by, we'll go back to spraying. Now, what I've done here is I flip these over once I take care of the edges. 
and so you can see I'm doing edges and when I get the edges all done I'll flip them over and actually paint them and I do that wet because really the underside's got nothing on it right now so you can just flip them right away and you're not going to damage anything because the way the parts that are made the parts that show have no problem you see here I'm flipping them wet just as I said I would so now I'm going to start the upper side of them and you'll notice see when I go across there the color comes out light green this will take as I said three times through to actually get this and there's five minutes five minutes people between each coat because otherwise you don't have long enough to degas and get the reducer materials out of them and you'll tend to get bubbles especially when you're shooting it like I said 84 degrees so we even though it looks continuous it's not Trisha's cut this together and it's actually three different times five minutes apart to complete these once they are finally up to full color. And once they're finally up to full color, they'll be the same color as the exterior of the car. And as I said, they turned out too shiny. The solution to that was to scotch bright them all lightly and spray them with a coat of Krylon matte finish, and they turn out exactly identical to what had been on the car back in 1926. And we were very pleased with that, and they look just beautiful, just the right satin finish, and they're still Brewster Green, just like they should be. So there you have how to do these, and how to actually refinish wood parts, 100-year-old wood parts. Like and subscribe. We'll see you later.